Now, as I proceed, what we need to take a look at here is we need to build these flanges, and we can recognize that they're basically reflected, right? So whether we look at uh, the right view or a combination of other views to get the information that we need here, okay, there's certainly different approaches we can take. But if we just create one of these flanges, then what we'll be able to do is simply position it and then mirror it uh, to get the second one. Once we've completed this, at that time, I would say you can union all uh, four solids okay, into one solid. And I would say still hold off on all the fillets. Right? So let's study this view here, and let's determine uh, what the dimensions are of our basic profile, uh, just to create the flange shape, and then to create the boss and the hole, as well as the weep hole. All right, so now when we take a look at our flanges here, we can determine what's going to be the best profile. So if we take a look at this as simply a, a rectangular shape that gets extruded, and we can use the radius dimension to fillet the edges, then we have an extruded rectangle onto which we can uh, project our boss and then ultimately our hole uh, for both the cuts the weep hole and the main hole here. So let's take a look. All right, right now I'm working in both the isometric view and the front view. And for example, let's just go over here to the front view. You'll notice if I switch my UCS, right, for example, I can do that if I go to view and I use the front standard view. Now you'll see here, right, there's my UCS. Let's say just adjacent to uh, our base there, we're going to draw the profile of the flange. Okay. Now, again, just using 2D geometry, I can just draft here. Let's create a rectangular area here that is 150 by 1.75. All right. And what we'll end up doing here is we'll extrude this and then fill it the corners, the top corners. Now you can see also in my isometric view here, I can work in either viewport. And so here the dimension is going to be 0 0.50. All right, so if we're looking at our drawings there, we can see we're going to enter 0.625 as the thickness and then as we look at the top edges here we're going to go ahead and use our fillet tool we're going to change the radius to 0.75 we'll select this edge here first confirm the radius enter and then enter again and then we'll do this other side here and same thing there so now we have the generic profile of the flange at this point I would go ahead and uh, draw on this face, and we could do this using the isometric view and also our polar snaps. So if I start with a circle here, I want to create the profile for the 150 diameter. You'll notice as I go over the front face there, and this is important because it's very easy enough to select the back center as well. So it's easier to do this in isometric view to make sure you have the right face. I can start there at the center, and then I'll want to do a diameter of 150. Now, lo looking at the way it's projecting my circle, you can actually see, and I just noticed right now my UCS is not correct, right? And again, if I switch to the other viewport, which is my front view, I can use my view there uh, to reestablish my UCS, and here, I may have to do the same thing. Let's go back to view. Let's go to front view. And then we could switch again back to our ISO view. And you'll notice, pay attention to the UCS there, that now it stays in the uh, front UCS orientation. This way, again, if I start with the circle command, that circle is going to be oriented on that face. We have diameter of 150. Okay, and we're going to extrude coming out 
uh, 0.125. So I'll use extrude here, select that circle, enter 0.125. Now, in order for us to cut the hole through this flange, we've got to make these uh, two solids a union. So we'll use the union command here, select both of them, and then hit enter. And again, just like we were doing earlier, this is a base part here that just in case if I mess up, I'll just put it off to the side. I'll get rid of it later, but this way I don't have to start from scratch once again. And now as we start to get these circular surfaces, I want to make sure that you guys take a look at face tress. So type in that system variable. And by default, it's 0.5, right? It leaves you with some very uh, blocky uh, curved surfaces. Let's just improve the visual quality here by upping that to 10. And then you could use the regen to make sure it gives you nice, smooth curves. All right. So as we proceed, again, notice that the UCS is still oriented properly. And again, with a 2D circle here, I'll approach the front face of that boss, snap to the center, and here we have a diameter of 0 0.750. Okay. Now, before we can subtract, we're going to extrude. And at this point, we can start to use the existing geometry. You can see that I'm extruding from this front face, and I can snap over here to this quadrant. And you'll see that my solid is the same depth, right, from front to back. And then now I can use subtract. I'm going to subtract from the larger object, enter, subtract the smaller object, enter, and then we should have our hole there. We could certainly observe it with our 3D rotate option there. Okay. Now we just have one more feature. This would be the weep hole. Okay. Now that weep hole doesn't go through the entire flange, just through the top half. One thing that we might be able to do here is just simply use a new UCS. Okay. And we could create a new C UCS just by using, again, the, the quadrants, let's say, of our flange here and then we could use a 2D a circle tool to position it with respect to the faces there. So let's take a look at how we would do that. First if I go back to my view tab here I have my coordinates and with three point what I'm doing is I can establish a new origin for example over here and then a new direction of X. So along the face there I can snap to the other quadrant and then a new direction for uh, Y. And again, what I can do here is try to snap to uh, another reference point on the object. And there you can see the new orientation. If I actually turn on my grid, you might be able to see it better. And as I orbit, you can see its orientation, right? So now, if I, let's say, work in the top view, Okay, now before we switch, you can see right now it, this is an unnamed UCS. Now later on when we start working with the auxiliary faces, we're going to need to be able to switch back and forth. So we don't want to recreate these UCSs every single time. What you'll notice is you'll use the UCS uh, list command right here. And you can rename any user created UCS. So here for example, I could just call it temp. Okay, or give it any name you like. Now you'll notice that as I switch views, right, let's say to the standard top view, you can see it actually changes the UCS. Okay, but at any time I can come back and reselect my user defined UCS. And this could be in any view using uh, this pull down UCS list menu. Okay, now what we could do here, and again, we could also change our visual display style, you can see now that it's really easy for me to use 2D coordinate entry to position my weep hole. And you can see I have it centered uh, from front to back and centered within the diameter there um, at 0.375. So let's make a weep hole here of 0.125 diameter and center it there in the flange. So to start the weep hole here, 
Again, you can see I'm changing my view to uh, an ISO view, but I still have the uh, temporary UCS that I want to work with there. Now, if I start with some construction lines, let's say I start with a vertical construction line, and I start right here at the origin, which is also the quadrant, okay? Now I know that I've got a 150 diameter, so if I offset by 0.75 from left to right, I find the center. Okay, and it might help to just change the colors of these layer or of these construction lines, or even change their layers. That's fine if you like to do that. Okay, just to make it easier to visualize. But now, if I create a construction line that's horizontal and also place it at the origin. And now if I use the offset of 375 there, okay, from front face to the back, so if I offset 0.375 from front to back, then this is going to be my snap point right there, okay? And once again, if I just want to make it easier to see, we can match properties. And actually, I don't need these previous construction lines, okay? Now off to the side, all I need to do here is just draw the diameter of 0.125. Oops, my bad. 0.125. There we go. Okay, and to position it now, I'll just use move, snap to the center of that circle, and then zoom in. Now, notice here, even in this isometric view, it might be difficult to determine, right, what's my intersection there. So you could easily just switch over to your 3D uh, orbit view and get into a position where you only see the two lines, the two reference lines intersecting, right? You might need to orbit around a little bit, but once you see it, okay, then you can snap to it. Now, unfortunately, I used a center line, which you can see there, <laughs> because of the gaps, it's hard to sense the intersection, right? So look, here's, here's what I'll do. Sometimes this is what happens. Here's what I'll do. I'll take those lines. And let's just for the moment right now, let's put them on a different layer, okay? Just something like that. That way we can snap right to that intersection. So I'll use move again, use the center of the circle, and we'll snap to the intersection here of those two reference lines, right? And you can see, even in this view, how it's confirmed, right? Now, what we'll need to do here is extrude upwards and then subtract. And then we could get rid of those lines. So if we extrude, all we're doing is taking that one circle and extruding through the entire surface of that flange. You could, again, this is how you could use multiple views, right? You can confirm what you're doing uh, from a variety of viewpoints. So here, what I'll do now is use subtract. Again, take it away from the larger object, enter, selecting the smaller object, and then enter. Then we have our weep hole. We can see this more clearly when we switch over to the conceptual. And as I orbit, we can see that.